What's going on YouTube? This is Box Away back with another video. Uh, we're going to discuss further more on this uh, Sergey Kovalev win last night against Bernard Hopkins. Alright, if you didn't see my post fight video, check that out. And even the video before that, I did like a final thoughts video, final like prediction video on uh, who I thought was going to win the fight. I thought Bernard Hopkins was going to find a way to pull this fight off, pull the win off and, you know, make further you know, uh, solidify his 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 greatness, okay? He wasn't able to get the win. He got dominated, okay, for 12 rounds shut out. But, um, Sergey, congratulations to Sergey Kovalev. And, um, you know, credit to B-Hop, too, for taking this fight. Um, if you haven't watched the press conference, I watched it, you know, a few hours ago. I watched the press, the post-press vice conference. It was very good. Check that out. Bernard Hopkins gave an excellent speech. It... You know, I was watching it, and I'm listening to him, like, you know what? If Bernard Hopkins goes to retire and walks into the sunset, that was the kind of feeling I got from him, from listening to that speech. It was a great speech, and I really hope, um, I actually want him to retire, you know? I don't think he has anything left to prove here, okay? Um, he can, he could probably still beat some of the top guys in the division, but he has nothing to prove. Like, I would hate to see him going out, getting knocked out, are badly hurt in the ring, all right. Um, it, it's you. You already made history. You already broken records. There's no point to continue. Okay. Um, so go go check the video out. That was a uh, that was a really good interview uh, with Bernard Hopkins. All right. Showed a lot of love to Kovalev and his trainer, and you know, um, just just check it out. Okay. Uh, so this video here. I've, I've read the comments, okay? I've been I've been paying attention to what you guys are leaving in my comments on YouTube. Um, I've been responding to people on Twitter, everyone. And I, I've been seeing what everyone's saying. Everyone, you know, whenever there's big wins like this, like Kovalev pretty much shook up the world right now. He shook up the whole boxing world. And everyone is talking about what would happen if he was in a fight with Golovkin, Stevenson, Ward. All right, um, I'm gonna give you all of that and more. I'm gonna bring up some other fighters, and we're gonna talk about how good Sergey Kovalev really is at this point. All right, so you guys, are you if you guys are like the guys that you know uh, are talking, are questioning, uh, you know uh, Miguel Cotto's skills because you know Ser uh, Sergio Martinez, you know he beat Sergio Martinez that was hurt. If you're gonna sit here and come here. And say Sergey Kovalev is still overrated. He he beat an old Bernard Hopkins. He's not really that good. This video is not for you. Go find another video. We're gonna sit here and discuss how good because he is good, and I believe that Sergey Kovalev is an elite fighter now. And uh, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna break it down. We're gonna run through a, a bunch of names. I'm gonna give you scenarios and just what I think. So if you guys have anything to do. If you want to keep yourself busy, clean the house, but listen to this video, go do that because it might be a long video, all right? All right, so uh, let's get started. Let's start right. Let's get right into it. Let's get right. Let's get Adonis Stevenson right out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. All right, Adonis Stevenson, he has a fight coming up in December. I, I forgot the guy's name that he is facing. I haven't really paid too much attention to it, to it because the only thing I want to see, if it's not him or Pascal, him and Pascal or him and Bernard Hopkins or him and Kovalev, I don't care who he's fighting. At this point, you're a lineal champion. Uh, we want to see you fight someone, okay? Uh, I mean, even at least a From Far rematch or something, uh, which is very possible. I wouldn't be surprised if From Far will be Adonis Stevenson's next opponent, okay? I want, I'm ready to see Stevenson and Kovalev, okay? It's long overdue. All right, Stevenson was supposed to fight him when he was with HBO. He got picked up and saved by Al Heyman. And now we ready to see the fight. Hopkins took the task. He took on the challenge. He lost. All right, Kovalev, I know Stevenson is the WBC and a lineal champion. But Kovalev has three of the four titles. Three of them, okay? All right, and it's, it's time. It's time for these guys to get it on. Now, if they were to fight, uh, if you see my videos in the past, I've always thought Kovalev was able, was going to be the guy to beat Stevenson, right? I always thought that, um, but it's a risky fight for both because both of them have a lot of power. The only difference is Stevenson has a lot of power in his left hand, okay? Uh, Kovalev has power in both hands. Um, you know, um, when I had debates with these people, with, with this fight, most people would say that 
Stevenson was the better boxer between the two. Even though he only has power with one one hand. Um, and and this is a good debate. You know, you can add, up to this fight, you can really argue that 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 point. Now after Kovalev just completely dismantled but not Hopkins. I don't know, it's up in the air on who's the better fighter. Because in Stevenson's last fight, we saw how completely limited he was. Okay, when Fofara didn't get knocked out by that left hand, and that left hand is vicious, it's lethal. But there was times where I'm screaming at the television, Stevenson, throw the right hand. He doesn't even throw the right hand. He goes left hand crazy every single fight. And he was able to hurt Fofara. Fofara was there to get hit. But he's tough. Alright, he's tough. He's been down and he got back up over and over again. He's a tough dude. Stevenson had plenty of opportunities. He could have finished him off, but he does not throw his right hand enough. Not only does he not have power in that hand, but he barely even throws it. Okay? He he's basically fighting with one hand behind his back. And if they were to fight, I think the scenario would be someone is getting knocked out early. It's not going past four rounds, all right? I say two rounds. That fight is going to be two. I think first round, they got, these guys are going to be filling each other out. By the end of the round, these guys are going to start fighting. And then by the second round, someone is getting knocked out. Either one is capable of knocking out the other guy, okay? Stevenson, Kovalev has been down. He's been hurt before. He's, he can get hurt by Stevenson's left hand. Stevenson, same thing. He's been knocked out before, all right? And I think one of these guys is going to knock the other one out. If I had to pick, I'm going with Kovalev to win that fight. Okay. Um, but I believe there's going to be a knockout. All right. So if they were to like make that a pay per view or something, if you prepare to spend money on a fight that someone is going to get, uh, if you're cool and you're comfortable with paying for a fight that uh, someone's going to get knocked out, and I don't, it might not be pay per view, but if it were pay per view, just just be aware that someone is going to get knocked out quick. That fight is not going anywhere, okay? Someone is getting knocked out. But I'm, I'm picking Kovalev to win that fight. And I always pick Kovalev to beat Stevenson, all right? All right, now, uh, so I got that out of the way. Let's talk about, uh, you got John Pascal also at 175, which, be a good, which be, would be a good fight too. Um, Pascal has lost. But he's never been knocked out. He's been hurt. He's been down. He does have stamina issues. That's his main thing. But he's a good boxer. Okay. Um, he's you. You know he has he has a uh, he has the athleticism to uh, which something that Bernard Hopkins lacked. Okay. He has the boxing skills to bang with Kovalev. Uh, how long will it last? I don't know. You know if they were to fight, I would pick Kovalev to win. But honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think. Pascal would be a better matchup against Kovalev than Stevenson because he's not as limited as Stevenson. Stevenson might punch harder with that left hand, but I think Pascal might on a skill level because he fights with both hands. I think he might be the better boxer between the two of them, okay? He might be the better matchup with Kovalev. He might be one of the most dangerous matches up matchups for Kovalev in my opinion um, in the division. So I would love to see that fight as well. Um, I don't know how possible that fight is. I know Pascal has a fight coming up as well. I know he was trying to fight the Donut Stevenson, a guy that he was close friends with. All right, they're both uh, Haitian descent and they both from uh, are in Canada. But um, I would I'd love to see. Uh, I believe no, maybe Pascal might not be Haitian. I can't remember. But anyway, I know they're close friends. So they were once close friends. And um, if I had to pick two, I would probably pick Kovalev because. If the fight does go the distance, I know uh, uh, Pascal has terrible stamina. He, he has terrible, terrible, terrible stamina, all right? He always gets tired midway through the fight, okay? Uh, who else is at 168? Uh, let me speak on this guy, and, and, and I know a lot of people don't know him yet. Um, I didn't know who he was up until he fought Devorah's Cloud, his last fight. Arthur... Uh, I think Bederbiev, Bederbiev, that's how you say it, Arthur Bederbiev, uh, a guy that uh, he beat Toros Cloud maybe a few months ago, knocked him out, all right, really quick, 
and um, he dropped them like three. He dropped them like three, four times or whatever before they stopped the fight. Uh, first off, I don't know. I don't know why Don King set that fight together because uh, the Forest Cloud was coming off of two losses. Um, I feel that uh, Gabriel Campillo also beat Tavares Cloud, but he, you know, he got a he got a gift win in that fight. Then he went on to lose to Bernard Hopkins, and then he went off to get knocked out by Adonis Stevenson, okay? And then right after that, he fought Bederbiev, which is a, a terrible fight. Because if you do if you do your homework, the guy has been knocking everyone out. He's beaten Kovalev and the amateurs twice, okay? And this guy is a big, light heavy. He's been fighting, I believe he fought... I believe in in, in 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 the amateurs, either for a heavyweight or a cruiserweight, I, I can't remember, but he's a big, strong, very muscular. He might even hit harder than Kovalev. This guy got and he's good. He's a good boxer. Okay, I believe he can even fight good on the back foot and everything. This guy is an extremely dangerous fighter. Okay, um, he's just young in his professional career. I think he only has six fights, but um, they were all knockouts. This guy, I don't see him fighting Kovalev anytime soon because he's still young in his professional career and he still only has single-digit fights. But um, he's you no; know, these are the guys like guys like him. This is why I don't want Bernard Hopkins to stick around because you don't want to end up fighting a guy like this guy. This guy is a monster, and um, like I said, I don't see them fighting anytime soon. But if he continues to do well, and we see him, you know, step up in a level of competition, uh, Taurus Cloud, I mean, it was a good name. That's a good name to have under your belt. But Cloud has been coming off of losses, okay? And he was a bit overrated to me, all right? Um, obviously, he was definitely an overrated fighter. But if he were to continue to beat guys and step up, uh, he spars with uh, John Pascal. He, he, he does spar, I, I think he's residing in Canada, but I think he might be from Russia, not really too sure. But I remember I looked up a lot of stuff on it. After he beat Tavares Cloud, everyone was saying, yo, beat Hop Stevenson and Kovalev. Everybody got excited. People wanted to see uh, Kovalev fight this guy right away, you know. But um, he has to put his work in, definitely. So if he continues to do well, he could be a threat to anyone. At 175, I mean, this guy's a big, big, strong guy. He can box pretty good, um, and he has a good amateur background. All right, so let's moving on down. Let's get to Andre Ward, okay? Uh, let's get to him, okay? Uh, rest in peace to Dan Goosen, okay? Um, he passed away, you know. Him and uh, Andre Ward is going through all the, the litigations and we don't know what's gonna happen now I'm assuming Andre Ward is out of his contract. Okay. He wanted to break free from that contract uh, Fortunately, Dan Goosen passed away, but uh, I don't know what Andre Ward is going to do at this point um, I'm, I'm hoping he's gonna get into a fight soon because It's been he hasn't fought once in 2014. He doesn't have a fight schedule Okay um, he needs to fight, you know, and I, I don't think his next fight should be the Golovkin or the Kovalev or, uh, you know, one of the top, top guys. I mean, he can do it, but I will let you, you know, you need, he needs to get back in the ring, all right? He needs to fight because he just, he just haven't been active at all, okay? He was inactive when he fought, uh, uh, La Bamba, uh, what's the name, uh, Rodriguez, I forgot it. I keep thinking of Delvin. I don't know why Delvin's always popping in my name. But uh, you guys know his last fight, he was even inactive in that fight. And um, he's been pretty much on and off since the Super 6 tournament, all right? And we always talk and we always put him still in that top two pound profile, but the guy is not fighting. I'm a big, huge Andre Ward fan, but we can't continue talking about you if you're not fighting. You know, hopefully in 2015, he's able to turn that around and we can see him back in the ring. Um, I would not want him to be in the ring with Kovalev as his return fight, but he needs to get back in there, start fighting, you know. Um, it's getting hot, man. It's getting hot at 160, 160 and 175, and I, his, his Kovalev fight should not be his return fight. It should not be him, because Kovalev, 
look, he destroyed a guy that fights very similar to Andre Ward. I, I, I think Andre Ward is better overall. I mean, I think Andre Ward, honestly, than Bernard Hopkins because overall, and I'm not just talking about a 49-year-old Hopkins. I think Andre Ward could beat Bernard Hopkins. Of course, he can't. He doesn't compare to him as far as resumes and legacies. But as far as if they were to fight, if this fight, if they were to fight 10, 15 years ago, I would, I would think that Andre Ward would beat Bernard Hopkins, okay? Because he can do everything Hopkins do, but he has the athleticism to go, to go with it. Bernard Hopkins, even when he was younger, he never was like a really athletic fighter. You know, he didn't have, he, neither one of them have big power, but our, I, I think Ward is always the faster fighter, you know. I think he was always quicker, more active in the ring. Bernard Hopkins was always, you know, he doesn't throw a lot of punches and everything like that. Um, I just think Ward is better than Hopkins. Um, but we see what Kovalev did to him. Kovalev was even able to time Hopkins, you know, as he was coming in with his head held low and, you know, counter him with some right hands, some right hooks. While he was, I think that's the first punch that he dropped Hopkins with. And he's, he did it a few times, even later in that fight. Kovalev had the perfect game plan against Hopkins. And even when he was on in the inside, I think he got the better of Hopkins too. Um, Ward would have to fight a perfect fight to beat Kovalev. I'm going to be honest, as good as I think Andre Ward is, now, after watching this fight, I do not, I'm not so confident about Ward beating Kovalev and you're hearing it from me I love Andre Ward but Kovalev is a guy that he punches you one time and you're gonna go down and I don't think Ward is as uh durable as a Bernard Hopkins I think Bernard Hopkins will probably take a punch a lot, a lot better than Andre Ward would um and Kovalev get a good shot at him it, it might be night night for Ward but if Ward is able to keep it at his pace, do some of the things that Bernard Hopkins didn't do. You know, he has to stay a lot more active in the ring. He is a lot faster. He could beat Kovalev to the punch, but he is the smaller, less powerful man as well. He's fought stronger fighters, but he hasn't fought a crusher before. So I don't know. I don't know how I, it, that fight would play out. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, two days ago, I would have told you that Andre Ward would beat Kovalev. Now, I'm not too sure, okay? I'm not too sure. I got to see what Ward is doing, how he's looked when he comes back. He needs to fight at least two fights before he gets in there with Kovalev for four. I can tell you who I think would win that fight, all right? Um, now, let's move on to the next guy. Uh, uh, let's go on. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Carl Frotch. Carl Frotch wouldn't survive in there with Kovalev. I'm just keeping it straight like that. Uh, I, he wouldn't do it, you know. Um, Andre Jarrell might have might have a good shot, but you know, no, I, I'm not even bringing up that fight because that fight probably wouldn't even happen, you know. I, uh, Andre Jarrell seems to be comfortable at 168, and he's just not coming back. Um, I would like to see the Ward fight as well, but you know, I, 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 I'm not gonna even discuss that because that's not even something like people are really thinking about. Uh, let's discuss Triple G, Golovkin. Let's talk Golovkin. Uh, now, who is the better boxer between the two of them, okay? I still kind of give the slight edge to Golovkin because, uh, you know, Golovkin defensively is a better fighter. I think he's more precise. I think he has the better jab. I think he still might even have the longer arms. Uh, who's more powerful? You know, I don't know. You know, uh, they both hit really hard. You know, uh, Kovalev is bigger naturally. Uh, Golovkin can fight comfortably at 168 if he chooses to. Kovalev, they're knocking out. He's stopping bigger guys in his division. So if you want to give that edge to him, you can. Uh, but I know everything, everyone is going to bring up the sparring, you know, the rumors about Kovalev being dropped by Golovkin or that he's intimidated by him and he well he got knocked out by him um i don't know how long ago that was uh i don't know if kovalev have improved since that 
you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to base everything off of a rumor, okay? Everyone usually tends to do that, you know, a sparring such and such one or an amateurs. I'm not really going to go there. I'm going to go based on what I've seen in the ring. And what I've seen in the ring, I still feel that Golovkin is the better boxer, but not by much, okay? Um, I really don't know who would win that fight. You know, I really don't know yet. I'm not sure. I'm not that sure. You know, because the thing about Golovkin, the one thing that I'm still unsure about is how he is on the back foot. How he fights when he is in trouble. He seems to be more durable than Kovalev, though. I think I've never really seen Golovkin really that hurt. You know, I think he's been... He got rocked a couple times with some good shots. But I haven't seen him in deep trouble, you know. Um, I would like to see how he is backing up, okay? Um, so that's the only thing that I, I have, a, like, you know, the, the only bad thing, the only negative I have against Golovkin. But other than that, I just, uh, I really don't know who would, would be the better fighter between the two of them. You know, I really don't know. Uh, I would have to see that fight. You know, I have to see it. I mean, you know, the way I see it between those two, if Golovkin continues to dominate, let's say he rule, he already rules the 160 division, but let's say he captures the title, whether it's from Miguel Cotto or someone else. Let's say he's like, finally, all right, I'm going to move up to 168. I'm going to fight these guys. And he continues to be dominant at 168. Let's say these guys are still undefeated. You know, Kovalev has the titles at 175. Golovkin moves up to 168. You know, he's beating everyone up there. Uh, and HBO decides, you know what, let's make a fight between the two of them, you know, let's make a pay-per-view or whatever. Let's say the fight happens between the two of them. I really don't think it will happen in a minimum of two years, a minimum. It, it would at least be, you know, what is it, it's 2000, we're going into 2015 now. I don't think it might happen into 2017. That's what I'm thinking. I'm talking like 2017. If that fight were to happen, you know, it would have to be under some circumstances where, you know, everyone is talking about it. Both of these guys are still undefeated, knocking guys out. And at this point, everyone is talking about it for so long. The buildup is so huge. Let's finally throw these guys in the ring together and let them fight. Um, but right now, if they were to fight right now, I really, it's hard to call it because Golovkin is knocking out middleweights and Curl Lev is knocking out light heavies. Okay? He could have knocked out Hopkins. He could have knocked them out. All right? If Hopkins were to take chances in there, he would have knocked them out, in my opinion. Uh, Kovalev could knock out everyone that Golovkin has fought. All right? He could, he's, he could have done the same thing. So I really don't know. You know, can Golovkin do the same thing at 175? I'm pretty sure he can, but it's always up for question. We don't know for sure because he's fighting guys at 160. And he's dismantling everybody at 160. And it's no question that I think he can beat everyone at 160, okay? Whether he can beat Ward and all these guys at 168, that's another question, all right? But right now, um, you know, it's, it's always it's a good debate. It's, it's, it's definitely a good debate. Uh, and I think they could fight in the future. You know, I'm not sure if that would happen, but a lot of people want to know my opinion. And a lot of people are going to discuss it. But I still think Golovkin is slightly the better boxer what, between the two, without a doubt. You know, just his defense, you know, his timing. He's just more precise. His, I like the way he blocks with his elbows. You know, he he just seemed like we've seen a lot of... of you, know the, you know the thing about Golovkin and Kovalev? I'm starting to realize that these guys are holding back. You know, they're going for the knockout. But when it's time to fight smart... They'll do it. You know, they'll pick and choose. Like, Kovalev, you know what? I'm going in there with Hopkins. I'm going to fight a smart fight. You know, I'm not going to... I'm going to make little room for error in this fight. You know, we usually want to fight guys like Blake Caparello and, and, and Agnew. I, I can take more chances. But when I fight Bernard, I'm going to be a smart fighter. I'm going to break him down slowly. Okay? The power is going to be there. And I feel the same thing with Golovkin, you know, because he shows signs of that. And I feel like when it happens, and it will, when him and Ward finally get in the ring, I feel like we're going to see the best of Golovkin, okay? 
And I feel like we're going to see the best of Ward as well. I mean, he always fights smart all the time. But we, you know, I think he's, I don't think Ward has fought a fighter as good as Golovkin. That's including Froch. And I know Froch is, is a great fighter. You know, he's a great fighter. I'm not taking anything away from Froch, but I do not think Carl Froch can beat. Uh, Golovkin. I don't believe that. All right, uh, not one bit. And, and he definitely can't be Kovalev. All right, so um, uh, yeah. So I, I feel like you know, at some point, we're not gonna see the best of Golovkin until he actually fights. You know, guys like uh, Andre Ward. You know, I think everyone else, he's gonna try to get out of there. You know, he's gonna see what they got at first, but he's naturally like a more patient fighter than uh, Kovalev. He's naturally just more patient. Like, the knockout is going to come, but he takes his time, and he just waits for it. Kovalev is a little bit more antsy, but he, he fought smart against Hopkins, but when it, he fights everyone else, he's usually, you know, a big wild, a little bit wild, okay? Um, and that's just why I thought he might lose this fight, because i never seen Kovalev this side of Kovalev, you know? So anyway, um, I'm trying to think of if, if there's anything else I wanted to discuss in this video. Hmm. Any of the other fighters? I know when I'm finished this video, I'm going to forget. I'm going to be like, oh, damn, you know what? I forgot to talk about such and such. You know, but I, I think Kovalev is real. I think Kovalev belongs in the top 10 power for pound. Without a doubt, is no debate anymore. He's in there. Where, where, wherever you decide to put him, He's up there, you know. If you want to put him top five, uh, he might be top five. Definitely think he's top ten pound for pound. No debating. No debating, in my opinion, all right? Kovalev, he's knocked, what, he's 26 and wins, 23 knockouts, okay? Um, he fought B-Hop. You guys were ready to put him at the number one. Everybody was ready to put Bernard Hopkins at the number one pound for pound spot if he were to beat Kovalev. Everyone. I've seen people on YouTube say it. I've seen people on Twitter say it. I've seen people say it everywhere. Every time we debate, yo, know, if Hopkins win this fight, yo, know, he's above Floyd. He's above, you know, pound for pound. He's the best. He might be one of the best of all time. I've seen people say that. But now that Kovalev went, you got to give him his credit because he was building up Hopkins. But for Kovalev to win this fight, you got to give him credit. You can't give him all. Oh, he's 50. He only beat Hopkins because he's 50. If Hopkins, if he were... Oh, God, you know what? I wanted to say this so that this, yo, Hopkins, I hated every time I heard him say that he was just, you know, he's going to take the, he, he's similar to Kelly Pavlik. Kovalev is better than Co Kelly Pavlik. I, 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 I did not like that comparison. I did not like that at all. Um, I thought Hopkins was going to find a way to pull out the win. But I did not think for one second that Kovalev was similar to Kelly Pavlik. No way. I've always thought Kelly Pavlik was very overrated. I thought Jermaine Taylor was overrated. Okay. I think he's good. I mean, he did beat Hopkins. Um, whether you thought he really won, you know, that's not up for debate right now. But I always thought Kelly Pavlik was overrated. All right. And not only did Hopkins prove that, but Sergio Martinez did as well. Okay, um, I never thought he was that good, and uh, I don't think I I was I would I expected a lot more from Kovalev than I did with with Pavlik because I, I I really didn't I was never I was I just wasn't a fan of Kelly Pavlik you know I, I wasn't a fan, and after Kelly Pavlik beat Jermaine Teller, we seen all of the issues come later. If Hopkins had more power, he might have knocked Jermaine Teller out. You know, I never thought Jermaine Teller was really that good. I thought I always thought he was overrated. All right, and Kelly Pavlik beat him, and I, I wasn't surprised. And then Froch beat him, and Arthur Ain't Abraham beat him, and I even think Sam Solomon could have beat Jermaine Teller if it wasn't for his leg going bad. All right, so um, I just don't. I just wanted to bring that up, and um, I think even a younger prime Hopkins would have had trouble with Kovalev. I honestly believe that. I don't know if he would have lost to him. But that would have been a very competitive fight. This fight was not competitive. That fight, a younger B-Hop, that fight would have been competitive. But this fight from last night was not competitive, all right? So I'm not really sure. Like right now, can, it, can anyone beat Kovalev? 
maybe Triple G, maybe Ward, you know, maybe even Stevenson, maybe Pascal. But 